Welcome to Unit 3. In this unit, you will talk about global business trends and the economy, practice interpreting data, and look at our relationship with developing economies and the way we live. As more people travel and work in other countries, we think about how we adapt to other cultures and which experiences make us happiest. Think about your relationship with money. Have you ever regretted a financial decision? Are you a saver or a spender? Listen to some people answering these questions. For, so long term wise, I would say I'm a saver. Um, I think it's really important to save, but I also think it's um, life is very fleeting and you never know what's going to happen. So if you want to do something, I don't think money should restrict you. So definitely a saver. Yeah, definitely a saver. Because when I was young, in Hackney, we, as a family, we didn't have a lot of money. So I never had a lot of money to spend. And I think because of that, you get into the habit of, not say not spending money, but being careful with money. But now I've got older and I'm now retired, I'm spending money like, money like water. <laughs> we, we save to spend. Exactly, right now, yes, <laughs> agreed. I guess I'm more of a saver. I also would say I don't actually, I don't care that much because my passions are with, are things that have very, very little to do with money. So I require, I use it for whatever I need to be able to follow my passions. And that's every the extent of what, in which I care about money. I am definitely not a saver in any way, shape or form. Um, I am a spender. I wouldn't say I'm an impulsive spender, but especially with the advent of contactless payments, I tend to just be, pay for things without thinking about it. And it's only when I get that balance text on a Friday that I realize how much damage I've done. <laughs> so my relationship with money is a funny one. So. As a student, I, I have a stipend, but so I'm also on a budget, a quite a tight budget. So um, I don't really have an opportunity to save, but I wouldn't say I'm a spender either. So um, yeah, eventually one day I'll get a job and um, maybe it'll be a different situation, but I'd like to be a saver um, in the future. I can't say I am a, a spender, or in between, in between. I try to spend as I can and, and save as possible. Okay. I'd say our generation, um, we're inclined to travel maybe a little bit more, and we have you know access to these great opportunities to travel for relatively cheaply. Uh, that's definitely a priority for us. And however, you know we personally are trying to be as efficient as possible while doing so. I mean, we're currently in London, a very expensive city. Uh, we are staying with some of my family, but trying to be as resourceful as possible when it comes to money. I like having pretty things and I'm not a good planner in any way. Um, so yeah, they can be challenging. I'm not very grounded with reality when it comes to money. Uh, I don't plan a lot. Oh, I'm a big spender. I'm a big spender, for sure. Uh, my mom keeps saying that my hand is like a sieve. You know, never, money never stays there. But again, my motto in life is you live once, you're not going to take it with you. You know, um, enjoy yourself because a minute is gone, you can never return, re repeat it back again. I spent most of my years as a student in China, so the government do care about the education. Uh, I think they spend uh, a lot of money on elementary schools or junior schools. Uh, but I'm looking forward them to uh, s spend more money on uh, more advanced education, like uh, uh, research or P uh, PhD student trainings. Uh, I'm from Ireland, and the way the government spends money is a constant topic of discussion. Um, but actually, education is one of the places where uh, I think the government spends money well. Um, when I was at university, we had uh, completely free education. Um, that's changed slightly, um, but it's still relatively low um, because the government subsidises it. 
um, and I think th uh, that you can see the results. A lot of people um, go on to university that maybe in other countries wouldn't be able to and I think that's really important. I think it's much more important that um, the government is actually investing in families and then families providing education because I remember my parents read a lot to me and um, I have a you know, broad knowledge of things because of my parents, not because of my school education. So I think that's much more important that we uh, maybe spend some more money on parents and then they have more free time to actually help their children to think critically about something because state education is always difficult and different. I mean, in England it might be different, but in Turkey I think it's a really dangerous thing to send your children into schools that might not teach very critical things. It's never enough. A government spending should be more on education and better spent. There's not a lot of investment in education in Brazil, and when there is, it's often badly managed, I find. Um, so they have lots and lots of works to do in that regard. Me being um, someone who is funded by the Brazilian government here in Oxford, um, I, I, I can often see that um, the way they make decisions or the way they, um, I don't know, just plan how to fund you and some people, um, there, there are some big mistakes there that even an amateur like me can see. Well, my wife was a teacher and she would say there's never enough spent on education, but I think the government has a very difficult uh, task to perform between health care, education and taking care of infrastructure. But in our province, I think the government in the past has been negligent, but the new government that was elected a year and a half ago is becoming more careful and in investing in education. So I give them credit for that.